All right, welcome back. Uh, this is my tutorial series for physics educator and physicist and physics students on how to use Python in physics. Uh, this is starting part two, really. Uh, part one, there's a whole bunch of videos, the playlist is down below. Uh, it's focused on stuff you would do in the first semester of introductory physics. I'm focusing on like a calc-based physics course. Now we're gonna get into the second semester, which deals with electric and magnetic fields, among some other things. So today what I want to do is to uh, make a, a program uh, that displays the electric field due to a point charge. Uh, and, and we're going to use a function to do that. So it's going to be a review of functions. So if you don't remember functions from before, this will be a great opportunity to do that. Okay, so let's just review the physics real quick because this is important, right? You know, a lot of times you'll see this is the electric field due to a point charge. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R squared. And, I mean, it's not wrong. It's just not the full story, right? Because this gives the scalar value of the electric field. And that's fine in some situations. But what if you want to uh, find the electric field due to more than one charge? Which we are going to do. Not today, but we will. Uh, then we have to use the real definition. So this is a much better definition. And really, this is one of the things like when you start doing um, Python with in, your physics, in the physics course, uh, you see that this is, doesn't cut it, right? Uh, and it, this is actually pretty easy to do. So this is a much better representation of electric field. This says the electric field is some point charge Q. Well, first of all, if I have Q right here at some location, it's not at the origin, and uh, I want to find the electric field at this position right here, which I call RO, the observation location, the first thing I need to do is to find the vector from Q to the observation location. Um, you know, and that's that vector r. So it's just uh, the vector r is the observation location minus the location of the charge as vectors. Those are vectors. Okay. And once I have that, then I can plug into my formula. This is just a constant, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, uh, 9 times 10 to the 9th. And then that's the magnitude of my charge, the magnitude of r squared, and then I have to include that unit vector r hat so that I actually get a vector. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is just to calculate, I'm going to draw a charge. I'm going to just pick it anywhere. And then I'm going to pick an observation location. I'm just going to put that as a, a point also. Uh, and then I'm going to calculate the electric field. And then I'm going to display the electric field. And then I'm going to build it as a function. Okay, because that will be useful for more complicated situations later on. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, so let's switch over here to Python and get started. Here we go, Python. Make that a little bit bigger. Let's see, bigger. That's better. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, remember in a, in a numerical calculation with Python, we need numbers. So the first number we need is that Coulomb constant, uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. I'm going to call it K. Um, and that's the way it's done. In the Coulomb constant K is a lot of times 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is better. But it's not easy to write in Python. So I'm just going to write K. Now I need my charge. Uh, let's do it. Let's do it this way. Let's make the charge a sphere. So I'm going to make a, let's say, how about a 5 nanocoulomb charge. So uh, Q1 is equal to a sphere. It's going to be at um, the vector position uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.020, 0, and it has a radius of, hmm, 0 0.005. Uh, it's going to be positive, so I'm going to make it red. Okay, red charges are positive. That's just that's just fun, right? You can make whatever color you want. Color equals color dot red, uh, and let's just run that. And there's my charge. Oops, you can't even see it. Put me down here. Okay, there's my charge, uh, and that's that's all I need. Okay, next thing I want to do is to give. I'm going to actually assign the magnitude of that charge as a property of the object. So I'm going to say q1.q. .Q. This is this is nice in case I have a bunch of charges. Uh, just associating that charge with a single object is going to it's a it's a good idea. Okay. So let's say five e negative nine. I said five nanocoulombs. And now I have my charge. Now I want to find my observation location. Uh, let's put this uh, R O. It's also a sphere. I'm going to put it at the position um, 0 0.02 uh, on the x-axis. 
and 0 0.0, negative 0, 0.01, 0, and then let's make its radius a little bit smaller, so 0 0.001, and I'll leave it, I won't put a color, we'll make, we'll make it like a gray color. And something happened. You know what happened? You see that? It's not spur, it's sphere. Okay. There you go. So there's my charge and there's my observation location, which isn't actually a thing, but there you go. Now what I want to do is calculate the magnitude of the electric the value of the electric field and print it out. So let's just say uh, I need to first calculate the vector r. So r is R O minus R Q. No minus q1 dot pos that's the vector location of the thing and in fact ro is also an object so it's ro dot pos i forgot so that's my vector r now i can calculate the electric field i'm going to do it in one fell swoop e i should say e1 but i'm just going to say e is k is equal to k times q1 dot q times norm r right norm r returns a unit vector in the direction of r so that's that's uh, my r hat divided by the mag of r squared now let's print that out print e equals e and let's use a uh, newtons per coulomb for the the units and then i'm going to also print the magnitude of that because that's sometimes a lot of people would find that uh, i'll just write this as e oops no yes equals mag e and has units of newtons per coulomb and let's run it okay so this is actually kind of important uh I, I do get a vector value for the electric field sorry you can't see it completely but there it is uh and the magnitude and everything seems to be working fine um and so, but now what I want to do is display the electric field as an arrow. So I think I've used the arrow object before, uh, but the arrow object has really two important parameters. One is the position, and that's the start of the arrow, and then the axis is a vector from the start of the arrow to the end of the arrow. So let's make this electric field arrow and put it at the observation location to represent the electric field, and I'm going to do it wrong uh, so you can see what happens, and then we'll fix it. So let's call this uh, e, EA uh, for arrow, and it's an object type arrow. Its position is going to be at the observation location, so it's going to be RO.POS. And then let's just put axis equals E, because I already have a vector axis, right? And then I'm going to put the color as yellow. Color equals color.yellow, because you know. Okay, so let's run that and see what happens. And there you go. I mean, it worked, and it did exactly what I said. There's not an error. The problem is that you can't see anything. I can't see the charge. I can't see the observation location. I can't see any of that because we have transitioned from the value of the electric field in newtons per coulomb, and we're trying to display that in actual meters, right, because I'm drawing the arrow. So this has a magnitude of 4 times 10 to the 4th, and so my arrow is 4 times 4, 10 to the 4th meters long. So it's an, it's an electric field arrow that's just huge. It's just huge. And I can't see anything. And I don't want it to be huge. I need to pick something, some scale value to scale everything down. Okay, so let's call that E scale. Now there's some ways you could, you could do this. I could, just, for, I could just guess, right? I could just guess a value. Let's say... Uh, e scale is 1 times 10 to the negative 5th. That's probably going to be fa fairly okay. And then when I, when I use the axis, I'm going to say E times E scale. So it's going to multiply it by a scalar value and, and plot something that's much smaller. And see there, you can actually see the charge now. So it did, it did make it much smaller. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And this is usually the way I do it. Uh, there. And so there's my point charge. There's my observation location. And there's my electric field in three dimensions and that looks pretty good okay one of the other things that you can do is to once you find the magnitude of that electric field uh you could just you know have i'm not even going to do it i'm just going to leave it to e, e scale because it's it's there's so many other parameters that can depend on how you want how big you want that thing to be um you know if, if i take how big i want it to be i want it to be let's say uh a, 
a centimeter long and I divide by the magnetic electric field, then, then that would give me my E scale. So there you go. Okay, so now what if I want to move the observation location? You know, that's pretty easy. I can just literally just change this value to zero or whatever I want. And then you'll notice it's closer so the, the, the electric field got a lot larger. Uh, let's move it a little bit further away, four. And so we are gonna have this problem of trying to uh, have multiple functions I mean, multiple scale, a single scale representing a wide range of electric field values. But what I want to do now is to make a function, and that function I give it, um, I give it the r value. I'm trying to think if I should give it the r, the everything. Let's give it everything. Okay, let's give it everything. Let's give it the location of the charge, the location of the observation location, the magnitude of the charge, and it returns an electric field vector. Okay, so I'm just going to put it up here at the top. Uh, def, I'm going to call it E, which is not good right now because I have that down below, but I'm going to get rid of that stuff. So in that, I'm going to give it RQ, RO, and Q. And I'm, I reuse those variables later on, and that's a bad idea, and I'm a bad person for doing it, but no one can stop me, and I'm a terrible person, and I'm okay with that. I accept my own flaws, okay? Uh, so I'm going to put this k in the function. And I'm going to put I'm going to I'm going to make up for myself being bad, and I'm going to put a description up here. This function takes uh, the location of charge and obs observation and q returns electric field. See. Now we're all good. Me and the Python people are good now. Okay, so there's k. Uh, I know the value of rq. It's a vector. I'm assuming it's a vector. I'm treating it as a vector. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the value of r. So r is just going to be ro minus rq. Now, right, I said that was ro was a sphere, so it's a conflict. But in, inside of the function, it should be okay. Um, now I can calculate the magnitude of the electric field. Let's call that e temp. I can't call it e. It's going to be k times q. I have to use the same q that the value I have up there. q times norm r, o r, divided by mag r squared. Okay, now I'm going, oops, return e temp. Okay, so let's just uh, run everything. So there's q1, that's fine, color q1, ro, that's fine. I don't need all this stuff. Now I'm just, just going to say uh, E1 is going to be E, and I'm going to give it the location the location of the charge, which is uh, Q1.POS, the location of the observation location, RO.POS, and then the, the value of the charge, which is Q1.Q. And then this will just be E1. E1. So when I run this, oh, this has to be E1 too. When I run this, it should do the exact same thing. So look at this magnitude electric field. It should be that exact same thing. Okay, because all I did was move all my stuff into a function. And, and that's the same. So it, it, I won. That's what's called winning. Um, okay, but now that I have that as a function, if I have like five charges or thousand charges, I can just use that function to find the electric field due to each piece and add them up. And I'm definitely going to do that in a future video. The next video, what I, I want to do is I will use that function. I'm going to make a dipole and I want to display the electric field around that in some orderly fashion. Uh, so that will be the next one. Uh, and like I said, did I say that? The uh, playlist for this whole thing will be down below. Uh, also the code for this, which I didn't save, I'm saving it right now. Uh, let's call this E field one point charge. And I'll give you that code down below. So you can click on that and you can you can uh, you can edit it and rewrite it and stuff like that. So I will post the next video at some point.